Welcome everyone to Team WSF Dish with Pepper. My name is Pepper Persley. Some of you may know me from my time presenting the Wilma Rudolph Courage Award to the WNBA um, at the Women's Sports Foundation Salute to Women in Sports or co-hosting the 2021 Girls Fest. I'm excited to be working with the Women's Sports Foundation to share the stories of some amazing female athletes competing in the Tokyo Paralympics. Joining me today is 2016 Paralympic silver medalist, Sophia Herzog. Hi, Sophia. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for having me. All right, no problem. I'm super excited to be talking with you. So let's dive right in. What does it mean to you to be a two-time Paralympian and a silver medalist? It's super exciting um, to be able to come back and qualify for the team a second time. Um, there's a little bit of pressure now to be hopefully a two-time medalist this time. So um, I'm super excited to be able to go to the Games again for my second time. Yeah, um, and I'm for I for one are super excited to hopefully watch you um, at at some point. So I heard you were 12 when you were start um, when you started swimming competitively. Is that right? And what led you to swimming? Yep, I was 12 when I joined my first team, and I was a skier growing up because um, I was born and raised in Colorado. And then I switched over to swimming because I was having some orthopedic issues with my knees, and swimming's a little easier on our joints. Um, and that's where it started. All right, that's super cool. So what was the first thought through your head when you earned your silver medal in 2016? Uh, it was absolutely incredible. I I knew that morning I had a really good chance for it. So to be able to see it officially on the board um, with my name and the American flag and second next to it was just um, overwhelming. Yeah, it's not an experience a lot of people get to have. All right, so what does a typical day of training look like for you as you prepare for the Paralympics? Um, so I swim nine times a week, and then I'm in the gym three times a week. Um, so my day can range from about four to six hours of training. And then I usually take about an hour to a two-hour nap every day. Um, and I read quite a bit as well on my downtime. All right. So we've got that in common, reading a lot. Um, so, you know, what's it like? Uh, what's it been like for you to train during the pandemic? Uh, it's been super hard, especially at the beginning of the pandemic when everything shut down. Um, swimmers are super dependent on pools, obviously, um, and there's a lot of people that run a pool to keep it open. So a lot of rec centers and pools uh, shut down for a good chunk of last year. So. A lot of us were out of the water uh, figuring out how to cross train. Um, so we're all super grateful that the pools are open safely right now and we've been able to finish out our training for the games. Yeah, that's really cool how you've overcome that and all those changes and still competing at an incredibly high level. That's really impressive. All right, so who were some of your role models or inspirations when you were growing up? Oh, goodness. Um... I think watching Phelps go eight for eight in Beijing, I was pretty young. So seeing that happen um, was absolutely incredible. Um, let me think. My parents were a huge inspiration to me because um, they pushed me really hard getting into sports. Um, my teammates throughout the years um, have always constantly pushed me and inspired me. Um, it's been fun to be on the national team for 10 years now and watching it how I was one of the rookies and a really young one, and now shaping into one of the older veterans and seeing the younger athletes come through. So it's been super incredible. All right, so you compete in a lot of different races at different lengths and different strokes. So how do you um, approach your races? Do you approach them differently? And if so, how? Yep, so I'll be swimming the 200 IM, 100 breast, and the 50 fly in Tokyo. And those are completely different events, different training. Um, so my warm ups will look a little bit different every day for each race. Um, and then throughout my training, we've had days where we just focus on 2 IM training, days we just focus on 100 brush training, and then days we focus just on the sprint for the 50 fly. All right, that's super cool. You actually answered one of my questions. I was going to ask you um, which um, strokes you were competing in, but you totally answered that, so thank you for that. Um, so how do you lead in your role um, as one of the team veterans? Um, it's it's going to be really interesting this year, especially because um, of COVID, so there's a lot of unknowns for even us veterans. Um, but I've been sharing some packing lists um, for the rookies to see because um, we're going to be gone for three weeks, so... It's a lot of packing, but also not a lot of packing because we get 
two suitcase full um, of clothes there. So really we're not packing any clothes. So just telling them about that and just preparing them. Um, it's really hard to prepare for a Paralympics and an Olympic games. Um, there's nothing that's quite like what we're about to walk into. It's really special. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing in general has ever been like this pandemic. Um, and sports in the pandemic has been really interesting. All right, so I got to ask this. This is something I actually struggle with as an athlete. How do you balance working hard at something but also wanting it to be fun? Um, I think what's really helped me is finding things outside of swimming. Um, so when I'm not swimming, that I can focus on that and not become a nutcase about swimming and worrying if I had a bad practice and picking apart my swims and picking apart myself. Um, I can go after practicing and go enjoy my dog, reading, being outside, and then I can come back a little bit fresher uh, and a little bit with more of a positive attitude towards swimming. All right. I love that. That's really great advice. Thank you. Okay. So how do you use your platform as an accomplished silver medal um, medalist to, to inspire the next generation of athletes? Um, I hope, I, I hope my platform's used just to inspire the next generation, especially of female and then, and disabled athletes of showing them, you know, what I've done throughout my life, what I'm trying to do, some of my challenges, um, some of my successes, just to, make that connection that um, what my life is like and if they can connect with it and realize that, hey, that's something I'm going through and really struggling with or, hey, like that happened to me and that was really awesome. So just making connections that I'm just an average 24 year old girl um, navigating life. I love that. So what's the most helpful advice you've received that has helped you as an athlete? Um, as an athlete, I think just knowing that all the sacrifices that have been made were, are completely worth it at the end, um, and always swimming to enjoy it, not swimming's not healthy when you're not enjoying it. So always love the sport and enjoy the sport. That is great advice. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So let's end with a reminder, um, for people to watch the Paralympics. Can you give everyone one reason why they should be watching? Oh, goodness, to d dive it to one reason, um, to see some incredible athletes worldwide um, overcoming a wide range of disabilities and winning some incredible medals and showing some incredible performances. I think nothing else needs to be said. That one reason is reason enough. Thank you so much, Sophia, um, for talking with me today. I learned so much from you, and I hope everybody listens to that last answer you had um, and watch the Paralympics. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks.